Prince Harry took time out from his apparently exhausting schedule to tell of his own struggle with corporate burnout and the psychological toll of modern life at a summit in San Francisco. That was news to some people who bought tickets for the live stream. His session wasn't even broadcast and we only know about it through photos exclusively released on Prince's uh, own website in a beautiful black and white imagery, of course. Joining me now is royal and entertainment reporter Kinsey Schofield. Kinsey, the website insists Prince Harry and two Silicon Valley elites dove into the psychological toll of leading through uncertainty, sharing personal anecdotes, evidence-based practices and forward-thinking policies. Uh, it all sounds very uh, complicated, but... Uh, I don't know where he's getting this exhaustion from. He doesn't even appear to have a full-time job. Well, last week, you're right. America's favorite Nepo baby, Prince Harry, spoke at a Better Up retreat. Um, and the, the description is just ridiculous, the pressures of today's world and modern corporate life. I mean, Prince Harry pay, plays, basically plays polo for a living. Uh, live stream participants <laughs> were disappointed to discover Prince Harry's presence was only available for in-person sessions. And those cost, just the live stream tickets cost over $1,000. So obviously, what? if you've invested this much money, you're going to be disappointed that you didn't get the full show. Now, I think what's interesting is some PR experts have come out to suggest that Harry's team the reason they didn't get that live stream. Harry's team is trying to control his image more by limiting people's access to him through things like this live stream. Were they afraid of how his conversation would be dissected? Do they not trust that he's capable of having, you know, a, a mature conversation? Why did they not allow that to be seen? Or is that just going to be like top tier and you have to pay three grand for access to Prince Harry? I don't know. Uh, I would love to know what sort of person would consider paying those sorts of sums to see Prince Harry in a live stream, goodness me. Now, Meghan Markle's estranged half-brother has done this bizarre video mocking his sister. He uh, stuffs a pillow up his shirt, mimics a baby bump, has got wearing a wig and a tiara, calls himself Megane Swamp Don Donkey. I mean, it's just all very odd. Uh, what do you make of this? Yeah, so I uh, ha couldn't believe this. I had to go watch it for myself. And he's actually done an update since that video went viral, thanks to an article in The Mirror. Uh, and in this um, video follow-up, he's talking to his sister, Samantha Markle, over the phone. And they both stress that this is a parody and it's for entertainment purposes only. They feel like the word trolling is not the correct description for what they do. And while I completely disagree with the content and it makes me uncomfortable. Here's what I do agree with. Samantha Markle argues throughout this video that it is their right to talk about their family, that everyone talks about the Markle family. The literal Markles are not exempt from talking about their own family members. Samantha said so many people are engaging in this, you know, glaringly hypocritical behavior, trying to justify what they do and projecting on others. You know, she's talking about like, some of the members of the media that have been criticized of them over this. And, um, you know, I think ultimately hurt people hurt people and Thomas and Samantha are hurt by the rejection. But also I think they really resent the negative attention that they receive because of their sister. And I would just stress as somebody that has been a royal watcher since I was a little girl, this environment did not become this toxic until around 2018, 2019, and then, you know, really dumpster fire in 2020. And what was the added ingredient there? You know, I mean, I think it's obvious that yes. a lot of the negativity is, is brought on by Meghan Markle.